What's up, YouTube? It's James Q. Quick from Learn, Build, Teach. Today, we're gonna talk about promises in JavaScript, so let's go ahead and dive in. All right, uh, before we talk about promises, we probably wanna talk about the thing that promises was created to improve on, which was callbacks. So there's something uh, with using callbacks in JavaScript called callback hell or the Christmas tree pattern you'll see a lot. Um, and so what this is, let me, I'm gonna simplify this little piece of code here a bit. Uh, I'm using a set timeout. So this is uh, basically gonna trigger whatever is inside of this callback function. It's gonna run that function uh, in a thousand milliseconds or a, millis or a second. So it's gonna wait a second, then it's gonna run this console log of five. So this whole thing is considered a callback function. It is actually an arrow function. If you, <clears throat> if you need a reference for arrow functions, you can go back, go back and watch the, the ES6 arrow functions video I did a few weeks ago. So with this callback, um, this doesn't look so bad. It's just a, uh, it's gonna go ahead and log the number five. But if we do something like this, where inside of the callback, then we wanna run another function and that thing takes a callback. And when that thing finishes, we want to run another function. And then when that thing finishes, we want to run another function and so on and so on. You get all this, uh, this tabbing and nesting of these callback functions. And this is what callback hell is. Now what this, uh, what this little sample will do is basically just print, uh, let me comment out a piece of code down here, actually get rid of that. So what this piece of code will do is it'll start at five uh, and count down five, four, three, two, one. Uh, before you guys leave negative comments in the video, I know you can use set interval for this. This is just uh, to show how callbacks work. So a little bit of reference. Uh, the callback hell is like a very common thing in JavaScript. So if you search callback hell, you'll see examples of this all over the internet. And you'll see how all these things get nested and nested and nested. And it's really hard to read. It's really hard to follow. And it's just not so good. So that's what promises are there to try to solve. It's working with asynchronous JavaScript and being able to handle it in a way that's more readable and easier to work with. So let's talk real quickly about what a promise is. If you think about just in regular English and conversation, if you promise to do something for someone, uh, you're not necessarily doing it for them right then. You're promising that at some point you will do that. Or if I say, oh, can I borrow a pencil? I promise to give it back to you after the test. You're promising at some point in the future that you will complete your side of the bargain, the thing that you promised. That's basically what a promise is in JavaScript. It's asking for something to happen asynchronously. Then when it's done, it will tell us whether or not it did that thing successfully or not. And an unsuccessful promise would be, I promise to give you your pencil back and then never give the pencil back. So let's create a basic promise here for recording a video. So record video promise. This is uh, gonna use the new uh, promise constructor. And what this takes is a callback function actually. Uh, which has two uh, parameters, resolve and reject. And then inside of here is where you do whatever work you need to do. So in this case, I'm gonna do a set interval just cause we're kind of using a callback function that waits uh, a second. And then it's going to resolve with a message that says video recorded. So resolve is what you call when the stuff that you're doing inside of the promise uh, is actually successful. So if I if I'm give if I'm ready to give you back your pencil after borrowing it, I would call resolve and then pass in the pencil as the object that I'm returning. So that's how this would work. To then use this, I could go uh, record video promise, and then we do dot then, and dot then is how we track a successful response from this promise. So let's uh, console log the response. And let me uncom or comment out the set timeout callback hell there. So we run this uh, after a second, we should see that message come back saying video recorded. That's exactly what we want. So again, to create a promise, it takes a callback function, this thing right here. It takes that callback function has two parameters, resolve and reject. Inside of the promise, you do whatever work you, that needs to be done. If that work completes successfully, then you call resolve, passing in whatever data you want to pass uh, to the caller of the promise. If it went wrong, if something went wrong, you could do a reject and say, error, uh, failed to record video. Now, if we save this, notice that we don't get a message ourselves that prints out. We actually get a message from Node itself. Uh, so the reason is dot then is only for success cases. We have to have a dot catch to catch any errors so we can log out here. 
All right, so now we should see our message fail to record video printout there. So one more time, create a promise. We'll take a callback function. That callback function will have two parameters, resolve and reject. Resolve is what you call when you finish doing whatever needs to be done successfully. Reject is what you call if something goes wrong. So let's look at um, let's look at wrapping kind of a set timeout as a promise. So I'm gonna do I'm gonna call this a function. So set timeout promise, and it's gonna take in a num as a parameter, a number, and it's going to return a new promise. Resolve reject. And let's say if that number, if number is less than or equal to zero, then we want to reject. So we can't work with anything less than zero. So say error, I'm done. All right. Otherwise, we want to call set timeout. And in the set timeout, what we're going to do is say resolve of num minus one. This might seem a little confusing at first. And then uh, pass in a thousand. So it's going to wait a second. So what we've got here, we've got a function that returns a promise. And this is creating a promise just like we did before. Got the resolve and reject. If the if the input, the num here is less than zero, then we reject, say that's bad. If it is not, then we call set timeout, which is asynchronous. When that finishes, we call resolve, passing back the num minus one. So from here, what we can do is we can call set timeout promise. We can pass it something like three, and then say dot then, and say response, and then console log, the response and here we'll see the fail video first and then we'll see uh, two being printed out mainly because we start we pass in three and then it resolves with num minus one that's what this result is here which will be two and then we print out two all right so uh, there's something in promises called uh, promise chaining where inside of a dot then I could return another promise by calling the same function here. It could be any promise I wanted to, but I could call the same function and pass in my new number, which is res response. When you return a promise from inside of a dot then, you can add another dot then by chaining and just keep on going. So in here, I can console log response again. And then uh, let's, uh, let's just run that. So what's gonna happen is it's gonna go through that pattern for two, it's gonna wait another second, then call it for one, and then nothing happens in here, and the then, so we're done. So we could do this, uh, I think two more times. Let's do return set time out promise. And in this case, we'd be passing in uh, res, which at this point is one. And so since we returned a promise, we can do a dot then again. I know it's getting a little repetitive, but I wanna show off the uh, chaining here. And then we can console log res and then call this one more time. And at this point, when we get to this set timeout, res is actually gonna be zero. So that's gonna throw an error or it's gonna call the reject. So then to handle that, we can add a dot catch here for errors and then just console log that error. So what we'll see if we run this is it'll start at two, it'll go two, one, zero, then it'll go error, I'm done. Notice also that error, I'm done, you may or may not have seen it, uh, came basically right after the zero. That's because after it uh, resolved with zero, it then called this function again, and it didn't do a set, up, set timeout before it actually rejected, so it rejected really quickly. So the cool thing about promises and promise chaining is inside of a dot then when you're handling a successful response from a promise, you can then return another promise and then call dot then on that whole thing and keep chaining those together. And at the end of all this, you just need one dot catch to catch any errors of something that went wrong along the way. Each one of those uh, promises does not need a dot catch. You can put one dot catch on the end. Any errors will then trigger the dot catch. All right, so we talked about promise chaining now let's talk about a scenario where we've got, uh, we've got multiple items, let's say cooking for dinner. And from my perspective, I'm waiting on dinner to be ready. I don't necessarily care when individual items or dishes for dinner are ready individually. I care when everything is ready so that I can go ahead and eat. So let's think about that in terms of promises. Let's say we have a promise for hamburgers or hamburgers promise, hamburger promise. And that thing is going to resolve saying the burgers are done after three seconds. Then we've got a salad promise. Salad's gonna be done after five seconds. And potato chip promise. Uh, potato chips are gonna be done 
at, um, at 10 seconds. So we could uh, use promise chaining. We could uh, call our hamburger promise, do a dot then, and I put in some debugging hee hees there so you guys can laugh at that. Uh, but uh, it will uh, call the hamburger promise. When it finishes, it will log out the response, which should be hamburgers are done. Then it will return the salad promise because salad promise is a promise. You can return it and then do a dot then on that, get the response there, log it out, then return the potato chip promise and then see that run. So uh, let's see what this looks like. What we should see is hamburgers will print out in three seconds, two, three, uh, then salad promise in five more seconds, and then uh, potato chips in 10 more seconds. So what this means is, let's see it finish here, there it is. What this means is hamburgers will print at three seconds, then salad promise will print five seconds later at eight seconds, and then potato chips will be done 10 seconds later at 18 total seconds. But if you think about cooking, these are not things that you have to do necessarily in order. You can do some of them asynchronously. So in this scenario, I don't necessarily care again when individual ones are done. I just want to know when they're all done. So you can use something called promise.all and promise.all will work if you pass it an array of promises. So I'll pass in hamburger promise, salad promise, and potato chips promise. And then you can call dot then on that and what you get is an array of responses. And so what I'm gonna do with those is do responses dot for each and get each individual response. And then uh, console log uh, each of those responses. So again, using some arrow functions here, if you're uh, new to that, you might wanna read up, but um, we're iterating through each of the responses, get each one and then log it out to the screen. So what we should see is we should see all of these print not when, not after a total of 18 seconds, but actually after a total of 10 seconds when the longest one is done. So let's, uh, let's run this. We'll count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. That was actually pretty good counting on my part. And you see all of these get printed at one time. So this allows us to run multiple promises at one time asynchronously independent of each other and then be notified when all of them are done by getting a reference to all of the responses in an array. Super, super cool. All right, so the next thing is a pretty practical example here of using Axios. Axios is a package. I had to install it with npm install Axios, a package that is used to make HTTP requests and it's very quick and easy to work with. And the way this works is you define a URL. Uh, in this case, I'm using the Chuck Norris API for Chuck Norris jokes and then replacing Chuck Norris with James Quick. Uh, it's actually pretty fun to work with if you've never used it before. And so what I will do is do a git request. So I'll do axios.git, I'll pass in the URL. And then at the end of this, I'll call dot then and we'll see, uh, let's log out what the response looks like. So this is gonna go out to that request Oh, let's make sure the URL is right for now. That should be right. So we see this response come back. It has a lot of stuff in it. It also has a data, which is the actual uh, data that's returned from the call. So let's print just that. Inside of the data, there's a value. And then inside of the value, there's a joke. Let's save that. Now we should see, uh, this is the Chuck Norris slash James Quick joke. And it says James, Qu James Quick's OSI network model has only one layer, physical. I don't get that one as much. Um, does he use a computer because a computer does everything slower than James Quick? Facts, tell your friends about that one. So uh, this is a very practical use case of using uh, promises. Let's just say, for example, you typed in a bad URL, then you would also use your .catch and you would get your error and you could log out error and then whatever, whatever the error actually is so let's uh, run this again and it should say error get address get address uh, not found that's basically obviously not a real server right there so we'd have to get rid of this to run it again and it will trigger the dot get now just to kind of wrap up um, promises and how they work remember that uh, when this get function is called if it fails whatever it's doing fails it's going to call the resolve because it's or excuse me reject because it's a promise and reject, I'm gonna catch any errors that are triggered from uh, reject inside of the dot catch and catch any successful things 
uh, from this one, which is uh, based on the code calling resolve if you were creating your own promise. So that's a lot about promises. It's a quick intro. There's lots more that go into asynchronous JavaScript, but promises are super cool and very practical and very good to know. Hopefully this helped you guys out. Um, I will do a future video using async await, which was a hot new feature in JavaScript as well to make this even simpler. But for now, work with promises, check them out, let me know what you think, and I will see you guys in the next video. Hey guys, if you enjoyed the video, hit that like button, leave a comment, and subscribe to the channel. You can also check out learnbuildteach.com to sign up for the newsletter to learn about my latest content. Thanks for watching.